Good morning, everyone. Whereas what are generic medicines? 
suppose a doctor writes a prescription and he writes a couple of brands normally. Now the same brands are manufactured by hundreds of companies across the country who are conforming to the best of the standards, the WHO, GMP standards which are available where the quality difference is negligible or rather non-existent. These companies make it for everyone, maybe a branded player or a generic player. So the quality difference is not there, the effect is the same, but when we look at the prices, there are drastic differences. So this is the awareness that we are trying to create. Educate the person. What is generic? And who currently can do it the best? Honestly, none from the existing health industry would have the slightest inclination of educating the patient, the common man, you and me. So what we believe is probably the government is the best equipped to do this and we are also doing our bit to educate the customers about generic medicines. Complete, clear, practically educating them. But what happens if I educate you about generics? Suppose I end up educating the entire gathering here about generic medicines and tomorrow if you get a prescription of generic medicines, what will you do? So if you are aware, it doesn't help much until and unless those medicines are available to you. Right? If I know I get a prescription, two medicines, this time I think yes, I will go back and get generic medicines for, my, for the patient, but I don't know where to get it. So you need availability. So that is the second A. If you are aware, you will move on to availability. Right now in the country, there are close to what? 5,000 general hospital stores, couple of them of Medcar, couple of them other standalone generic pharmacies which have come up. These are places where the medicines are available. Suppose now let's go to the second stage. Okay, uh, I'm aware of generic medicines and I'm getting it at a certain place. How do I accept it? In India, we believe in God a lot, yes? We also believe in doctor because God is who created us and the doctor is who saved us. In short, we say, we say that in doctor we see God, right? So acceptance is hinging a lot on the doctor. We believe that he is the one who should drive the acceptance. But if the same doctor starts writing a generic, it becomes so much more easier for us as a community to accept because we know about generic, we, it's available to us, but the last point is whom do we confirm it to? So that is acceptance. If we are able to overcome that with the help of a doctor or ourselves, there are a lot of people who have been able to overcome it just by looking at the sheer difference, 100 rupees branded medicines versus a 10 rupee generic. Look at the difference, look at the incentive to save. Right? Let's take a couple of examples of how in the world over people have been able to drive acceptance. If you look at this example, this is a practical study which was done in top 19 OECD countries in the world. The best way that they could actually drive acceptance was allowing a pharmacy to substitute. So when you allow a pharmacy to substitute the molecule, the brand, the molecule is not substituted, the molecule is the same as what the doctor prescribed. If you are allowed to substitute a brand with another generic, this is what drives generic a lot. Secondly, if we see, there is something called a pricing or the margin structure which couple of countries have adopted. So if I say, if I sell, if I as a chemist sell something that is worth 200 rupees, 
I get a 2% margin. I sell something at 100 rupees, I get a 5% margin. It's either the same thing of 50 rupees MRP, I get a much higher percentage margin. So for a chemist like me or anyone else, it makes more sense to sell a lower price item, which is how some countries have been able to drive it. And the last ones, which is slightly uh, not very uh, successful, is that they incentivize the doctor to prescribe by generic. Let us look at some statistics here. US as an economy has saved 22% by value just by shifting to generics. In absolute value, that is something close to $275 billion. That's a huge figure that US has saved just by shifting to generics. Now, if you take the example of how we in India can actually make a difference. We see that in most of the developed countries, it's the governments who are paying for the medical bills. It's not the individual like you and me. If I am falling ill, the government is paying for my medical bills, whether it is doctor consultation or it is medicines. So if the government is paying, they have tried to keep the reimbursement for a patient as the same value as that of the generic value. This way, a lot of developed countries have driven the value down and substitution of generic has increased. But unfortunately in India, you and me pay out of our pocket. Government doesn't give us anything for, or maybe the insurance company also does not reimburse us. So who Bears. It's you and me who pay from our own pocket for our medical bills, for our parents or for anyone else. Who are the people who get benefited the most for generics? The first thing that we see is the people who we talk, the below poverty line people. Those are the people who cannot afford branded medicines. They are the ones who are benefited. They are the ones who can save or rather live a normal life despite falling ill if generic medicines are accessible to them. The second set of people are chronically ill patients, the one like my relative. He's a chronically ill patient. So if he happened to take that same injection and instead of the substitute, he would have paid one lakh rupee more a year. That is on one medicine. What about the others? So his bill would change drastically there. And the last ones are the senior citizens. These are the people who are who have gone beyond the earning age. So they don't they no longer earn for themselves. But their expenses have gone up. They're going up day by day because more and more lifestyle of some disease or the other starts catching you after you cross 60, 65, and 70. At that stage, income has dried up. But the expenses on medicines are rising. These are the people who can be benefited the most if we end up making generic medicines accessible to them. So I would like to summarize the entire thing into a very simple line. That we at MedCard believe that medicines are cheap. They have been made expensive. And our objective is to not just educate and make the patient aware of genetic medicines, but also bring the genetic medicines accessible to them, available to them at the best possible prices. Thank you.